All I have to say is wow. When I asked them not to nerf Dodge, <laughs> I didn't expect them to just remove it from the game. Dodge is gone. Dodge only exists now as a new keystone that works for spell dodge, and we'll talk more about that in a moment. Overall, these changes do seem like they have the potential to be very, very good. However, I'm gonna miss dodge a little bit. Just, I'm just saying that maybe, maybe we shouldn't have deleted dodge. Maybe, maybe we could have called evasion dodge instead. Anyways, I'm, I'm getting, I'm getting a little emotional here. Dodge is gone. Fortify has been nerfed for non melee builds, and we've got a bunch of changes changes to core defensive layers, meaning armor, evasion, and energy shield, as well as a new way for evasion-based characters to deal with spell damage. So let's talk about it. Hey guys, Big Ducks here, and welcome back to the channel. Now, if you're new or part of the large percentage of people who are still not subscribed to this YouTube channel, make sure that you do that so that these videos are sure right up in your feed, and also like the video if you're enjoying all the content. Now, I'm going to have to say that when I loaded up this page, I was not expecting for them to say, yeah, so we're just straight up removing dodge. Just getting rid of it. It's just not going to be a thing anymore, except for spell dodge. Was not expecting it. I wasn't exactly sure how they were going to go about this, but it seems what they've decided is that instead of all of these alternative ways to scale defenses, they are reinvesting in the basic armor, evasion, and energy shield modifiers. There's a lot to go over here. Um, a lot of this is little itty bits that I'm probably going to skip because they're not too impactful right now, but just know that this substantially changes the way that builds are going to build defenses. It's going to be a lot of learning and it's going to take a lot of time for us to figure out exactly how to go about this. They're talking about buffing core defenses and recovery. It's good to hear that they are trying to buff recovery. We'll see how that actually works. It has to do with life and energy shield mainly. And then they're going to be working on auras, curses, and elemental damage over time tomorrow. Core character defense and recovery. We're doing a major balance pass to improve defenses and recovery for all characters. The goal here is to put more power into the core defenses, armor, evasion, and energy shield. They really want you to choose armor, evasion, and energy shield. The problem, dodge and blind provide more mitigation for fewer passive points and item slots than any other defense type. Attack dodge does this in a form that is almost identical to evasion, but is far more efficient. Goal, remove dodge entirely and review certain powerful mechanics like blind and fortify for non-melee characters. Improve almost every other scalable defense type significantly to make them more powerful. Armor, evasion, energy shield, and spell block. That's a big one. Honestly, I really wasn't expecting dodge to just be deleted. <laughs> That's not what I was actually expecting at all. Armor as a core stat doesn't provide sufficient defense with low to medium investment. Armor characters instead rely on a number of other mechanics to provide them with a defense against physical damage. So armor is pretty bad right now as is. So what they've done essentially is that they are making it so that you only need about half as much. And you can see here is that previously if you had 10,000 armor and took a hit that dealt 2,000, you'd reduce that hit by 20%. Now you will reduce it by 33%. So it is going to be a relatively big increase in defenses from armor. So armor might actually be somewhat useful now. I'm still a little bit worried. Um, supposedly we're going to be able to scale more armor according to a couple things down here like there's going to be some modifiers and such that give us more armor like they're adding more armor to determination i don't know that anybody will use determination still and they've added a bunch of stuff to the actual items particularly body armors and shields to be able to deal with physical damage reduction you'll see that body armors and shields are getting eight percent physical damage reduction possible on each of those slots one thing that they're really trying to do here is they're trying to make it so that shields are a defensive option you put a shield on, it's meant to protect you. So I think that that's cool. I think that it's going to be good. So evasion doesn't provide sufficient defense. Evasive characters instead rely on acrobatics and phase acrobatics to provide attack and spell mitigation. I don't necessarily agree with this. Evasion's good as it is. If you have high evasion, it's it's a solid defensive layer against attacks. I, I do agree that acrobatics and phase acrobatics were very easy to invest into. The solution is remove attack dodge entirely, substantially buff evasion so that it is a good option and make sure it is easily available on items. Essentially, what they're trying to do is they're trying to make it so that evasion replaces normal attack dodge completely. I'm fine with that, but it does make it so that builds that tend to scale like evasion and energy shield together and just went dodge or builds that kind of like crossed over the tree to just grab dodge in some meaningful way, those builds are getting pretty heavily nerfed right now. So those builds that were like, say, like right now, I think the steel skill build goes up and grabs dodge on the right side of the tree. That's going to be relatively heavily nerfed now. There's lots of things that I'm not, I'm not super happy with this removal of dodge like this, but 
hopefully those builds will have easier ways to invest into defenses with armor and such now. Essentially, they're just making evasion being closer to what dodge was, right? So 24,000 evasion rating will give you 75% chance to evade an attack from a tier 16 monster. If you can get 24,000, which you should be able to now, you'll have that 75% chance to evade. The thing about dodge previously was it was just a random chance, whereas evasion was kind of like an entropic sort of thing where eventually you would get hit. With dodge, you could get lucky and dodge as many times as you like. I'm wondering about how that's going to work. For example, they changed the grace skill gem. I still don't know that people are going to be using these, if I had to be honest with you. I don't think determination and grace are really going to be used. They don't seem good enough, I guess, to really make use of. We'll have to see. Now, the thing about it is that evasion doesn't do anything for spells, as they said here, and they kind of got rid of, you know, spell dodge. So they're adding in this new mechanic called spell suppression. So what it is going to be is that on evasion items, as well as like in the dexterity portion or the right hand portion of the tree, there's going to be a new mechanic it called spell suppression. What this does is it gives you a chance to half the spell damage taken whenever you suppress it. Now it says this chance can be stacked up to 100%. The thing that I'm sort of concerned about here is that with the way that dodge based characters worked before, what would end up happening is that the way that the mechanic functioned is that you would only get hit occasionally and then you could heal up that hit. Now I worry about things like physical spells hitting dodge characters because yeah, you can reduce the damage of it by half, but I, I have this sinking feeling that I kind of think that with the way that this is currently set up, I feel like physical spells are going to annihilate evasion-based characters right now. I'm really worried about that. I hope that it's accounted for and I hope it doesn't feel too terrible. We'll talk about that in a moment. But spell suppression is designed as the dexterity character's best answer to spells. If they can improve the effectiveness of spell suppression where it can go above or maybe like make you take less than 50% damage from it, then maybe this will be good. But I'm just kind of worried right now because half is still enough to kill a lot of builds, especially evasion-based builds when it comes to physical spells. Physical spells are going to hit very hard now, and I'm I'm a little worried about that. Since it's also much more reliable than spell dodge, sure, 100% chance is obviously more reliable, but that's not really what evasion type characters really needed. One major thing is that phase acrobatics no longer exists, and the acrobatics node has been re redesigned. So now what it does is it makes it so that spell suppression changes into spell dodge at 50% of its value. So if you do gain a bunch of spell suppression, you will be able to convert it into spell dodge, which will still be nice. Um, it's still capped at 75%. Honestly, I do feel that this is just going to be a given. It's just like, yep, you take acrobatics if you're going to be an evasion-based character, right? If you're going spell suppression, I just think acrobatics is just going to be a given. So I guess it's fine, but it's a little weird. Maybe spell suppression will be good for characters that are moving into that side of the tree. Maybe that's something that they could do, and that might be nice. So for example, a character that is traveling from the top or bottom of the tree over to the right side of the tree that stacks spell suppression just to make themselves take less damage from spells since they wouldn't really be able to invest in dodge anyways or evasion rather now maybe this will help those builds out a little bit as of right now i don't really know this is one of those things that we're going to have to play with and see how it feels because they can throw numbers at us all day with these kinds of mechanics but without actually seeing how the mechanics feel to play. I really can't give you a negative or a positive. It seems like this will be fine. We'll have to see how much it takes to scale spell dodge up to like 50, 60, 70% with the new acrobatics node. If it's relatively straightforward and easy to get there, then this should be overall a buff to defenses for evasion based characters. We will have to see. On top of all of this, they are going to be doing a pass on basically everything that scales evasion or armor very well, or maybe not super well. They're going to nerf some of the high-end ones. It changed some of the low-end ones to be a little bit better. Interestingly, Transcendent says that it grants a larger penalty to all maximum elemental resistances. I'm assuming this is just because armor is going to be more effective now. We will have to see what this percentage is. I don't know at the moment. Uh, hopefully it's not too large for those builds that like that. Raider is getting some changes, obviously because of all the evasion and dodge stuff. Um, they're no longer granting 35% more chance to evade melee and projectiles. It's just giving 10% more chance to evade attacks during all onslaught. I'm not exactly sure how this will function. It probably will even out just because of how good evasion is supposed to be now. The next thing is that characters that rely on armor are not really protected against elemental damage. They are going to fix this by adding more maximum elemental resistances to that part of the tree. I think it's a good change. It means that you're just going to take less damage in general. You know how like there's that node on the left side of the tree, the life node that gives you like a buff effectiveness and like plus one maximum fire res, more things like that. 
should be a good way to handle it. Should give a little bit better elemental protection in that area instead of just, you know, like having 75% resistances should be nice. It seems like something that they want to do as well now, if you see here, the Veiled modifier that increased quality on equipment for energy shield as well as the energy from Nought. They're taking some power from these, but don't worry too much because they're moving it back into the base energy shield on items. So this is going to mean that it's going to be buffed at the low end and should about even out at the high end, so not much of a change here. This is just more so make it easier for early on energy shield characters to survive. So they also said that the base types are going to have maybe a little bit too little armor energy shield and evasion on them since they're going to be relying on them particularly as main defense layers. And what this means is that the base types are now generated with a random 0 to 10% higher base defense as an inbuilt currently non-modifiable property. And then energy shield values on base types vary from zero to 20%. So essentially what this is, is you remember how in games like Diablo 2, there were things like cracked or superior or things like that. This is them adding that in. And I mean, I guess it's fine, but it's just adding another layer of RNG on whether or not an item that drops is good, I guess. I am very torn on this one. I kind of don't like the idea that you can get this really powerful item, but you're just going to feel like it's not as good because it doesn't have 20% increased base level of energy shield. They are getting what they want, which is that they want the top like massive tier items to be more difficult to get. I don't know how I feel about this. I guess it's nice just because we're going to get more energy shield and armor and evasion and stuff like that, but making it just a random chance feels kind of bad here, honestly. Items already have so much RNG on whether or not they're good. Adding another layer of RNG onto the base type. If we were able to modify this, maybe I'd be okay with it, but they did even note currently non-modifiable. I don't know how I feel about this. I'm not super hyped about this one. It's fine because the items are getting stronger, but it's going to be just harder to roll good pieces of gear, I guess. Energy shield is most often used with leech and regeneration rather than embracing its unique recharge mechanic. I agree. I felt that the recharge mechanic has felt terrible for the most part. Very rarely do I feel like it's good. The only time I've ever really felt like it's good is when you get things like Wicked Ward plus things like the Devouring Diadem helmet, but the problem is, is that you need like mana scaling and stuff with that as well. Forces your recharge to happen or things like Vol Discipline, those tend to feel good, but the recharge mechanic in itself, if you try to rely on that, it's just like, it typically takes too long and it doesn't heal you quickly enough most of the time. So their solution is to increase the base recovery rate of energy shield recharge, rework the downside of the Wicked Ward Keystone, and more improvements to energy shield recharge in the core modifier pool for energy shield gear. I'm a little worried about them moving it into that because pieces of energy shield gear already require so many mods on the item to be good. Now we have to get energy shield recharge to get like a worthwhile defensive like recovery layers as well on here. So energy shield now recharges at a base amount of 33 per second. So in three seconds roughly, you would go from zero to full. The Wicked Ward Keystone no longer grants less energy shield regeneration or less maximum total energy shield recovery from Leech, now grants 40% less energy shield recharge rate. This brings the recharge rate down to 19.8, so basically exactly what it was before, right? But now whenever it begins to recharge, it doesn't stop. It means that builds that do have like energy shield regeneration or energy shield Leech can now take Wicked Ward and feel comfortable with having that extra layer of guaranteed recovery. This is good for Wicked Ward, it's good for builds that are going to Leech and regen energy shield. It will allow you to invest in other forms of energy shield recovery if you would like to, like energy shield leech. Recharge also has more avenues of scaling and they have told us a couple ways that they're gonna do that. Energy shield based body armors and shields provide up to 66% faster start of energy shield recharge. I'm guessing if you get a lot of this, it's just going to like start almost automatically. It should be good. This is another one of those things we're gonna have to see how it feels to really tell whether or not it's gonna feel good, right? They've also increased the maximum total energy shield recovery per second from leech on the past tree, Energy Shield Leech should now be able to be invested in more heavily to be better. Interesting change here, Bill's wanting to invest in both Evasion and Energy Shield relied heavily on Ghost Dance, requiring them to be a trickster. They're just giving everyone Ghost Dance now. Uh, this is something that they've done before with like the Occultist used to have Wicked Ward as one of their nodes, and now the Occultist doesn't have Wicked Ward and it's just on the tree. I feel that this is a good change, but 
I'm worried because it's removing one of the main reasons that you would go a Trickster, and the Trickster has very, very little identity now. They do say that it's going to be changed as it no longer grants a Ghost Dance, but the Trickster needs something because it's losing a lot of its identity at this point. This was one of the last things that the Trickster really had that made it like, well, it's a cool, you know, dodgy movement type build to be, but it's not really gotten much love recently. Hopefully we get something. So they're making it so that when you get hit, lose a Ghost Shroud and recover Energy Shield equal to the percentage of your evasion rating. Gonna be very similar to before, just gonna be a good way for Energy Shield evasion based characters to scale defenses and recovery. Bill's wanting to invest in both armor and Energy Shield have no mechanic to give a synergy between the two. This one is super interesting. We're getting a new keystone called Divine Shield. Percentage of total physical damage prevented from hits recently is regenerated as energy shield per second. There are a couple other sources of this in the game, and this is pretty interesting. So that means that if you have both armor and energy shield, you are going to be able to just get some like free regeneration for damage that you defend from, right? It will make a more convincing reason to actually go hybrid here. Since they're removing some of these other like generic defensive layers now, we're really gonna need more ways for these hybrid characters to be able to survive. So I'm glad that they've looked into that. So this is something that I've actually felt has been a big problem in Path of Exile for a while now is that there's very little way to deal with damage over time effects. So they're improving life regeneration modifiers on gear and adding a new keystone, which is going to help you dampen the initial impact of damage over time. I'm a little worried about this because the way that it's going to work, right, is that it's called a uh, Leith Shade. I don't know that I'm saying that right, but take 75% less damage over time if you started taking damage over time in the past second. 100% more duration of ailments on you. So essentially, if you are able to get immunity in some way to ailments, this will make it so that damage over time affects you significantly less. So it says 75% less damage over time if you've started taking damage over time in the past second. This gives you more time to deal with things. I'm just wondering how this is going to feel because it might be one of those cases where you have about a second to deal with it and then all of a sudden you just die instantly to like a giant ignite or something like that. This should be good for builds that do get that like, you know, complete immunity to ailments essentially because then it's only going to just be a pure positive on any non-ailment based damage over time that you would take. So that's kind of cool. We'll see how it works. It's something that was definitely an issue uh, for builds like say, um, I wonder how it's going to work with things like low life petrified blood. I'm curious to see how those two abilities interact. So something that they said is that there are a few specific ways to gain a lot of life recovery through regeneration. The vast majority of the ways that you get it are not that great. So they're removing a lot of life regeneration from specific things, right? Like removing various sources of life regeneration per endurance charge, review effects that give life recovery rate. They're removing a lot of that stuff from random areas and just adding it into the strength section of the passive tree. Now, you might remember that they said that the ranger doesn't have a form of life recovery that they excel at, and they said the shadow doesn't either, but I've always kind of felt like the shadow excels at like leech and life gain on hit, which is the solution that they've added. I've always felt that they've kind of had that already, right? But they're adding more ways to invest into it, which is cool. We're going to get life on hit, life on kill, life leech. These should be nice ways to have better recovery layers should be pretty solid. And then they said witch and shadow casters don't have accessible form of life recovery, which is kind of weird the way that they're wording this, but it is what it is. They're adding in another passive section that gives life on kill and life recoup off of damage that you've taken. This should be pretty powerful. It doesn't look like block is changing much for non gladiators, but gladiators uh, depending on what new notable that gladiators get to replace versatile combatants, rest in peace. Now, the main reason that I feel that anyone would go a gladiator, there's two. The first reason is going to be because of bleed pops, and the second is going to be because of versatile combatant. Versatile combatant is getting removed from gladiator and being put on the main skill tree and being completely neutered is what it feels like. You remember the change that they made when they changed glancing blows to be like, you take more damage now from blocks. This is what this feels like. This is gonna be something that's good for builds that just want to passively invest into block and they just want some extra spell block, but it's not gonna be great for builds that are focusing on block. So I'm wondering what that new passive is going to be for the gladiator. So we can take a look at this. Versatile Combatant is now a keystone passive on the passive skill tree. Grants 2% chance to block spell damage for each 1% over capped chance to block attack damage. Also grants negative 25% 
50% to maximum chance to block attack damage and spell damage. So you're going to be maxed out at 50% block and spell block if you take this notable. The idea is, is that if you stack up to, what is it? I, I don't exactly know. I'm assuming that if you take this, it's going to be anything over 50, right? Because that's going to be the new maximum. I would hope that that's the way that it works. It kind of removes that like super insanely tanky gladiator type thing that a lot of people, especially people in the gauntlet were playing recently. We're going to have to see how this works out for the gladiator. Um, they said that the gladiator's block ascendancy passive skills will be reworked. We're experimenting with a new notable passive that makes the gladiator's chance to block attack damage lucky, which helps offset the downside of versatile combat. I feel like it's going to need more than that. I feel like the Gladiator losing Versatile Combatant loses the main reason that you go block on the Gladiator. Like, sure, it's going to be easier to scale block and such with it, but I don't know. It's it's just, it was what made the Gladiator so powerful, and I hope that the new stuff they give it is good, but rest in peace to block-based Gladiators for now, until we see what they give us. So, one other problem that they said is that shields in general just aren't too good. Um, they're removing a bunch of the irrelevant modifiers from shield and adding some pretty powerful ones. They're getting rid of all of the just random, like, increased fizz damage or increased cast speed or increased attack speed, global attack damage, all that kind of stuff, getting rid of all of that from shields. And as I said earlier, they're focusing on trying to make them much, much better defensive options. I wanted to see how spell block was going to work, but it seems like you're just going to actually have to invest into it now instead. So we're getting higher chances to block spells on some shields. We're getting a bunch of new modifiers that we're going to get. A bunch of good stuff in here, like higher life gain on block, physical damage reduction, I guess some accuracy rating, suppressed spell damage taken, lots of good stuff in here. We'll have to see. Um, this is, once again, another one of those things where you're going to kind of have to see how it feels before we really know. Unfortunately, you're hearing that a lot because that's how defensives are. You can have all of the, like, highest numbers ever in Path of Building and make it look like your character is, like, super A-OK, -okay, and then you jump into game and you just die, and it's like... Well, what happened? As a defense, Blind was equivalent to an incredibly high level of evasion with minimal character investment. Rest in peace, Blind. Make Blind synergize with evasion so that it's more powerful only if you have built a very evasive character. Blind is now also going to be an offensive debuff. So if you do get blind on, say, a like random melee character on the bottom left side of the tree, it's going to have them get 20% less evasion rating, meaning that they are going to be easier to hit. But it also means that those enemies have less accuracy rating now instead of like less chance to hit you. So blind is now not as good as just a generic good defensive layer. So you know how like a lot of characters would get the node on like elemental cluster jewels that just made it so that things around you were blind whenever you use elemental gems yeah that's basically not going to be a thing anymore it's not going to be that good um it is removing a pretty decent defensive layer from a lot of random builds so hopefully the other defensive changes are able to overcome this but i'm i'm a little worried about blind not being a thing i guess it's good it's going to make it better for evasion based characters so they also said that the saboteur ascendancy notable passive skill that is tied to blind is being reviewed yeah you should change that because blind doesn't do very much for the saboteur anymore and flesh and stone is being changed when they made this change of flesh and stone um i was like okay well flesh and stone the main reason that you use it is you either want to do damage or you want to blind things so let's see what they did they have reduced the cost of flesh and stone and changed tempest shield so that it is a similarly powerful defensive reservation effect the intent is that there are three competing defensive reservation effects that you are able to pick between and use together flesh and stone has been changed back to 25 percent that's nice for people who just use it as an offensive layer and then tempest shield has been reworked to become a 25 percent reservation effect that provides a large amount of spell block as well as immunity to shock depending on this number this could be a pretty good aura for block-based builds. Block-based builds that go low life could uh, potentially use this if they wanted some extra block. And now Fortify. Fortify is intended as a defensive benefit for being a melee character, but can often be obtained by spellcasters using melee weapon types that don't actually engage in melee combat. Change the Fortify mechanic so its effect is based on your melee damage. Now, what I wanted to see is I really wanted to see something along the lines of them making it so that if you hit many times softly or once very hard, you would get an equal fortify effect. You just have to base it off of how many times you're hitting because there are a bunch of builds which hit not as hard as melee, but they hit very, very often. We're experimenting with a system that lets fortify be applied based on melee damage dealt so that tiny little melee damage hits don't provide a full strength fortify. This will mean that we'll be able to introduce a chance to gain fortify on hit on 
passive skills or items, which we've avoided in the past, but we're working to avoid a system where every spellcaster wants to run shield charge. You get fortify at very little cost. I'm a little worried about, I'd really like it that they make sure that those fast attack hitting builds are still okay to use fortify. As long as that's the case, I'm fine with this otherwise. And we see here, it says range characters want to have access to the mechanic without significant investment or being a champion. So champion fortify looks to be intact. And that is going to be pretty much it for the defensive changes. So my TLDR at this point is that it looks like things are okay. It does look like defenses are going to be much more straightforward in Path of Exile now. They'll be significantly less confusing. There's more options to invest into for a lot of different defenses, but this is one of those systems where we're really going to have to see how it actually feels. On paper, it looks good, and I am cautiously optimistic for how this looks. But looks can be deceiving. Remember, boys, if you're enjoying the content, make sure to like this video, subscribe to the YouTube channel for more content similar to this, and stay safe out there in Ray Class. And I'll see you guys in the next video.